friends, it's Shelly. Thank you so much for joining me in this tutorial. Um, we are going to make these really nice fingerless mittens. Um, like they're just so comfy and cozy and, and I've been wanting to make a pair for a while now and here they are. I was in Michael's and I got Yarn Inspiration Karen's Cake, Karen Cakes. Um, there, it's a four weight yarn and I got it in the colorway Rhubarb Cream. Um, now these Karen cakes were on sale for five bucks. So I was so happy about it. There were three of them and I bought all three. So be watching for um, more items from this, uh, from this colorway um, in the future. I'm gonna probably make a matching beanie and a matching scarf. Um, we'll see what all I make from it. But anyways, I deconstructed the ball because that's what I like to do um, and uh, use the colors that way. Um, there are five different colors, so you can either use Karen cakes like this, or you can choose, if you want to follow with a five color way like what I did, um, choose whatever five colors you have um, that coordinate together and, and go ahead and make it with me, okay? And so we're going to use our Addy 46 needle machine, and uh, you're going to also need a little bit of yarn for the duplicate stitching of the heart at the end, and I show you how to do that as well. So once you uh, have all your supplies ready, um, let's get at her. Okay, so we are going to start with our waist yarn. So we're going to bring our last white, our first black needle, in line with our yarn feeder here. And we're going to take our waist yarn, put it behind that black needle, and we're going to cast on going back and forth in front and behind each needle all the way around. Let me just say it's so nice to be back. I haven't uh, <laughs> used my machine for like almost, well, almost three weeks because I was gone on holidays. And I'm back now and I'm eager and ready to get started. <laughs> I miss this little girl. Um, I've got a bit of a cold. I came back not feeling 100%. Just a cold, nothing major. Um, but if I sound a little weird, that's why. <laughs> but I'm fine. So I'm going to do seven rows of waist yarn. Okay. So you pick your waist yarn. It is um, a contrasting color to your working yarn. So that when we close the ends up, you can see your stitches on your working yarn um, very, really easily, okay? So go ahead, knit seven or eight rows or however rows you're, many rows you're comfortable with. And when you're done that, I'll see you back. All right, so I'm almost at the beginning here. So I'm going to set my row counter to zero. So it's ready to go when I get there. I'm going to knit to that last white needle. I'm going to cut off my waist yarn, open the latch, put it between the last white and the first black. And I'm going to grab my first color. Now, my first color, I, like I said, I love these Karen cakes because why try to buy a bunch of different balls to match your yarn when you can buy one and take it apart and have perfectly coordinated stuff? Like, I just, I love doing that, actually. So I, um, there's five colors, and I'm going to start um, with this purple color here. So you figure out, if you're using different balls of yarn, you figure out what your color scheme is going to be. And we are going to start. Now, I learned um, a real good trick, like a really neat trick on um, how to change yarn colors and never have a line. Like, you you are going to be shocked, actually, um, if you haven't ever done that. And I will link the name of the person that I saw this from um, down in the description below to give her credit. Um, because she it's just somebody I saw doing it. And I thought, oh, that's brilliant. So I, did, I tried it, and it works wonderful. Um, but for now, we're going to add our working yarn into our yarn feeder in between that last white and first black needle. I'm going to hold both yarn ends and I'm going to begin knitting. So I'm going to knit three rows. Make sure it's not tight coming out of my ball. I'm going to knit three rows of my first color. That's one. And this is two. coming around to do three. Oh, my handle. Okay. And when I get to this last white, first black needle, I'm going to go ahead and cut my yarn end, open my latch, put it between the last white and the first black. I'm gonna take my second color and normally we put it in our latch or in our feeder like that. We put it between our last white and our first black and, and uh, we continue knitting like that. But I'm going to take this new yarn end and I'm going to swing it back under this white needle. 
Okay, so this needle is going to knit two colors. And I'm going to go ahead and knit three rows of this new color. Okay, so this is three. And I'm going to come around. There we go. Found the right speed. I'm going to come around and we're going to take a look at those two strands from our color change, okay? I'm going to cut them a little bit. We're going to go ahead and we're going to grab them and we're going to tie a little wee knot. And as you tie it, you will see that this is tightening up that stitch that's on the, like, our, our first stitch. And then you're going to give it another little knot and you're going to just drop it and let it go. And that is going to make it a jogless join um, that is absolutely beautiful in the end, okay? So we're going to cut this yarn because we've done three rows. We're going to grab our next color. So I'm going to put that in between my last white, my first black. I'm going to grab this bright pink yarn. Normally, again, we would put it in just like that. We'd close the latch, we'd hold this, and we'd knit a few needles. But we're going to take that new color. We're going to just put it back. And we're going to let this needle here pick it up. So it's picking up two strands again. And we're going to do three rows. Okay, and when we're done the third row, we will tie that off. Now, if you were doing a blanket or something and you're doing like more rows, then you could wait like four or five rows of knitting um, and then tie it off. It just makes it a little bit easier. So here's row two. And this is three. My handle's cooperating a little bit more with me now as we get going. I could put some weights on here too, which would also help. Okay, so that's row three. I'm going to cut that yarn off. I'm going to open my feeder. I'm going to put it in between the last white and the first black. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab my next color, which is this light plum. I'm going to put it in my yarn feeder. I'm going to close it. Then I'm going to take that strand and I'm going to put it underneath that white needle. You see the, those two cross? So this white needle is going to pick up two strands every time we do a color change, okay? And I'm going to do three rows. Did I tie off that other one? When I come around, we will tie off the one from the previous row, okay? So this is row one. This was my color change. This was from the rows before, so I'm going to grab those. And I'm going to give it a little knot. You can see those stitches snugging up close together, which is exactly what you want. Tie it off, cut it off, and you're done. It's as simple as that, okay? Now, some of you may have seen my last video of this mitt that I put up. Um, I took it down because I realized after the fact that I had gotten two techniques mixed up and uh, and I did it wrong. So that's why I'm redoing this um, and doing it the right way for your benefit and mine. Um, so my apologies to you if you saw that last one and, uh, and you know, you realized how wonky the join was um, as I was doing it. This is a new technique for me. I'll, I'll be honest, I've never done a juggles join before. And so when I did it, um, I thought I was doing it right. And lo and behold, I was doing it wrong. Okay. So I'm going to continue on in that manner, changing my colors every three rows until I get 33 rows, okay? So you choose um, what color variations you want yours to be. I'm going to do the dark plum. Um, then I'm going to do this blush pink, then a bright pink. And then I've got, um, let me see, where's my other color? This color here, which is like a mid-tone, um, a mid-tone kind of plum, I guess you would call it. And then I'm going to do my peach or my orange. Okay. And then I'm going to rotate all five of those colors. I'm going to keep repeating all five of those colors in that um, manner until I get to 33 rows. And when I get to 33 rows, I'm going to add waist yarn and I'll see you back. I'm going to add my last color change, which is my purple. Okay. I'm going to put it in there. Then I'm going to swing it down under that white needle. Okay. And I'm going to knit three rows.
So now I'm going to cut this yarn. Now I've done three rows. Open my latch. I'm going to put it between my last white, my first black. I'm going to go down to my other where I did my color change. And I'm going to tie that tight. And then you can see those stitches tightening in there. And that's just so satisfying. <laughs> so there we go. That was my last one that I needed to tighten. Cut that off. I'm going to grab my waist yarn. I'm going to put it in my yarn feeder. In between the last white, the first black, I'm going to hold those two ends. And I'm going to knit. First row, I'm going to go slowly because I'm still working with that uh, Karen cake, okay? Okay, so I'm going to go around until I get to that black marked divider. I'm going to open my lash. I'm going to put my waist yarn in there. I'm going to cut it off. I don't need that long. And then I'm going to rotate my barrel twice to remove it from the machine. And then I'll remove my machine from the table and we'll take a look at that seam, okay? <laughs> there we go. Project is removed and I'll be right back with you. All right, so I have my piece off the machine. I've stretched it widthwise and lengthwise. And there is what it looks like. You know, my first one was, was smoother. Um, it does make it kind of straight. This one's, this one still looks like it's jogged. Um, I guess it takes some practice um, to do, but that, that is how um, I learned how to do it. I don't like the stitch. I think maybe I didn't tighten it tight enough there. Um, and I can see my knot there, so I'm going to go in and I'm going to work that one. Um, but that's, that's what it looks like. So I am showing you this technique, but I'm not promising you I'm going to use it all the time. <laughs> I like my other technique. I think it, for me, it makes a smooth, my other way of doing it makes a smoother join here. But, um, I think it just takes practice because when I saw Betty's join, it was like beautiful. So, you know, there is a learning curve to everything that we learn that's new. And, and, um, although I've knitted a lot, um, I've, I've never done the joggles join. <laughs> and so, um, you can tell. I'm going to keep practicing. So there you have it. Um, now we're going to uh, go ahead and we're going to close up our ends. So grab your crochet hook and two bobby pins or stitch markers and I'll see you right back. All right, so we're going to um, stay on this end that we're on. Let me just make sure. Yeah, this is the beginning of your project. You're going to take your waist yarn end and you're going to pull on it and whatever loop that come, uh, comes out of is where you're going to put your first, first stitch marker. Then you go to the left of that Okay, and you will see that um, this one right here, your your yarn end is coming out here, but it's right beside this one, so we're going to pick that up. So to the left of this one, there's two. One right on top of the other, you're going to take the top one. We know there are 46 stitches um, in this piece, so we're going to count. We want to get to the exact so, um, far side, so we're going to count 23. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22. This is 23. So we know that stitch 24 and 23 are our very corner stitches. So I'm going to go under 24. Then I'm going to go under 23. This counts as 1. 23. Take it through the loop on my hook, which was the 24th one. So now I've worked two stitches. I'm going to go down to that bottom. Pick up that next one. That's 3. Up to the top. 4. Down to the bottom five up to the top six and keep doing that all the way across at seven eight making sure that you count them because um if you miss one of these loops then um your row will unravel and you don't want that okay so let's just keep going till we get to the end Just like that. And again, doesn't matter if you go over top like I do or underneath your stitch like that and pull, put it through. Um, I, I've had that question more than once. Um, basically, all you're doing is picking up the stitch and bringing it through the loop on your hook. So it really doesn't matter how you pick it up, okay? So I just find it easier to go on top and hook it and pull it through, okay? Right across until you get to your first stitch marker, which will be on the bottom here. I'll show you when I get to the, to the end. All right, so just a reminder to make sure your yarn ends are outside of your tube because you don't want to sew them inside. Then you'll have to undo it to try to find those ends, okay? So this is 43, 
44. These bobby pins are great because this is 45. You pull it up, get your hook under there, and sometimes it's tighter. Um, at the end, and it's hard to find those last stitches. That's 46, so that's where these bobby pins are my best friends, okay? And then we're going to yarn over, pull it through that loop. Then we're going to roll up that little edge till you get the very first row. Pinch the stitch on the left, pull the top row out. Go on down a little further, roll it up so you make sure you have that very first stitch, pinch the loop, pull the row. Go farther down, roll it all the way up, pinch the stitch, pull the strand. We have to do this for the first row only, okay? Pinch the stitch, pull the strand. There's something satisfying about doing this. <laughs> I really do enjoy doing it this way. I, like I've mentioned many times on almost every video because I get comments um, a lot that uh, you can put, you know, you can do it a different way and then you just pull the whole thing off um, in one sweep and then you unravel it later. Um, I find this just as quick, to be honest, and I do like this method of removal. So that's how I do it. Now that you have the first row off, I just take this, I wind it around my fingers, and then you just begin unwinding it and rolling it up as you go. Easy peasy, my friends. Okay. I'm going to go till I get it all unwound, and then I'll see you back. All right, so I got that off, no problem. I'm gonna go ahead and hide this yarn end right from the start here, just before I do the other end, um, just to get it out of the way, okay? So I'm just gonna go under there, across the bottom, and then go back, just like that. Cut it off, and that end is complete, okay? Aren't these colors just gorgeous, like, oh. Like, I'm just sold on the fact that you buy a Karen cake that, that changes colors, you separate them. I mean, you can do projects, obviously, without separating them, but um, when projects that you want um, the same exact amount of, um, you know, you want your rows to be even and you don't want your color changing in the middle of a row, then um, you just take it apart and it's like you've bought yourself several rows or several balls of yarn. <laughs> I just think it's genius. I love it. Okay, so now on the other side, you're going to look for that waist yarn end and the stitch that it's coming out of. That's this one. That's why um, waist yarn in a contrasting color is so important. That's where you put your first bobby pin. Now, when you pull this, this is the loop. So to the left of it, the one with two loops, but but this top loop is attached to this to this uh, strand. So just um, you know, just to give you another idea how you find it. Okay. Then make sure your yarn ends are outside of your work. You're going to go ahead and count 23 and 24, put your hook in 24, then pick up 23 and bring it through, and you're going to close it just like we did the other end. And when you get to this end, I'll be right back and, and uh, join you, okay? All right, so this is 45. Put my hook under it, pull it through, work it, pull up on my bobby pin, get underneath number 46, take out that stitch marker, work it, yarn over, and pull it through. To close it off okay this is my long sewing tail so um i have to pull it through that way and now this side just unravels very very easily okay and you can go ahead and get that tail out of the way but you know what some genius lady another person in a facebook group um i'll show you what she did i'm gonna do it with this this one because you're you're when you take your waist yarn off it tangles around this this um yarn end so just take it put it on a needle pull it through leaving a little loop because you want to find it <laughs> if you don't leave that little loop you're not going to find it then you just take this now i've unwound it but i'm going to just do a job here and you just when you take it off that tail does not get in the way Another brilliant lady. You know, this is the benefit of being in a group. So come on over and join my Koala Knits and Knacks group because it's in the groups where you get other people's um, ideas and, and you get inspired and you, you know, this is a brilliant tip, okay? Because you're constantly unwinding, untangling your waist yarn from this, this strand that you have left for sewing. But now you don't have to. And then all you do 
I'm going to stay with you till the end here, is once it's all unwound. So thank you to whoever the brilliant mind was who showed us this. Um, I think it, it's just amazing. It works great. And if I can find you on my Facebook group, <laughs> I'm going to put an acknowledgement in the description box below. And if I don't find you, would you please, please, please comment below that it was you that showed us this in um, Facebook. Okay. So now where is that loop? Okay. So there it is. See if I pull on it. That's where it's coming from before I completely finish this. Snagged on there. Okay. I'm going to take it out. I don't have to search for it later and then I can just finish this just like that okay and then I've got my yarn end all ready to go so there we go now I'm going to stretch this widthwise and lengthwise and there is our beautiful piece we are going to start sewing from this side where our long tail is so grab your needle and uh, I'll see you right back all right so we are going to do the mattress stitch to close so I've got my needle and my yarn threaded, you're going to come down to the base here where your tail is here. You're going to find the very side row, okay? You want the row where the wide part of your stitch, let me just show you here. Um, here's a stitch right there, okay? The wide part of the V is to the left and the point is to the right, <laughs> okay? And we know that we have every color, every row is three stitches, okay? So I have three here, three here. We are going to sew down 12 rows, okay? So that would be this purple section, this orange section, this lighter section here, and this pink section. We're going to sew down for 12 stitches, okay? I'm going to pick up the two that are there. I'm going to go across, and I'm going to pick up two. Often I leave that first stitch and I just sew that, so then I would have picked up two. Um, but this one was easy to see. So then I'm going to line that up. I'm going to go in where I came out here. I'm going to pick up two, two stitches. See, two bars just like that. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to pick up two. So now we've worked four stitches, right? Keeping down, we're going down the same row, following the same row down. Make sure it doesn't doesn't twist. So that was four. I'm going to go back in where I came out. That's six. Back in where I came out. Pick up two. And that's six on the other side. Seven, eight on one side. Back in where I came out. Seven, eight. And this is two more, that's 10. And 10. And our, our rows are gonna match up because we, we started on the first stitch up here. If you start on the, six, on the second stitch and then sew this up later individually, if you start on the second stitch here, you have to start on the second stitch on this side. Um, otherwise, uh, it's not gonna match, okay? So now I'm gonna go down, pick up two more. That's 12. And 12, okay? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pinch at the top here and I'm going to pull this around to close, okay? Just like so. Okay, so now we want to miss six stitches. So we know that this section is three, this section is three. So I'm going to put my needle into where I came out. I'm going to miss those three bars and miss those next three bars. That's six coming up at the... Um, color change there and I'm going to just get it snug there but not not pulling too tight okay just to get the get the yarn straight there okay then <clears throat> I'm going to make sure I'm on the same row I'm going to go in I'm going to pick up two I'm gonna go in where I came out I'm gonna pick up two and I'm gonna do this all the way down till I get to the end, making sure I stay on that same row, okay? And we've just made our opening for our thumb. Okay, so just like that. Two and two, all the way down, but before, I'm gonna just do two more on the other side to get me to the beginning of this pink here. 
and then I'm going to pinch here because I have a, a loose strand there. If I pinch up here and I pull this, I'm going to gather all this on this side right here with this, where this yarn is trailing. So I'm going to just pinch right at the base there and then pull this. Okay. That way I'm not bunching up my thumb hole. Okay. So now we'll continue on the way down. Go in, pick up two. Go in, pick up two. I'm just going to stick with you because this is a fast project. We're almost done. Okay, pick up two and two and two and two. Once you make one of these, you will be able to do this with your eyes closed, basically. <laughs> you won't need to watch the video. You'll just, you'll whip through it. And, and I had one left here, so I'm going to actually go up and get it. Um, and you'll be able to make a pair of these in no time flat. So I, I would say these would make, this particular um, glove makes just such an excellent uh, gift idea. Make it with a matching beanie. Um, and I'm going to just finish this off at the end here, but I'm going to put my hand in there to show you. Here we go. Make it with a matching beanie or, um, you know, an ear warmer, a scarf, whatever you like. But these um, cakes that we buy, again, the colors just blend so beautifully. How gorgeous is that? Like, it's beautiful. And when you don't feel like wearing them, maybe you are you don't need them anymore, just pull it up, use it as a wrist warmer. It sticks on, stays underneath your, your jacket, keeps you nice and warm, but your hands are free. So um, that, my friend is a tutorial on how to make these beautiful mitts. I'm going to I'm going to um just finish this off here with you. Just like so. Okay? Tie another knot just for secure reasons, okay? Tighten knot, then I'm going to take this and I'm going to hide it underneath there. I should put my smaller needle on because it makes it easier but that's okay you get the idea okay now you can go ahead if you wanted to sew uh, like take your crochet hook and do a ridge on on the top of your cuff or even where your fingers are and do a fancy stitch you have the op option to do that as well but I don't know I just I like them just like this I'm, in this particular pair I'm not going to crochet I'm going to leave it just like this all right, so now that we have our beautiful little mitts done, let's um do our little embellishment with uh, duplicate stitching. I'm choosing this dark purple, uh, this plum kind of purple. You want to make sure that you know which is the top. Okay, so this is the top of your hand, so we're going to do it at the cuff. But you're going to turn it so that it's this way, so that your fingers would be down here, okay? Because I want my heart to be facing the right, the right direction, okay? So I'm going to do it. In these two rows right here so we got to pick a row where the wide part of the V is going up so I'm gonna eyeball it to the middle here somewhere okay you can count the rows but I'm gonna go right I'm gonna go in up through this purple just so that I'm um, I can hide it in the purple and you don't see it I'm gonna come up right there right in the point of that base of that stitch I'm going to pull my yarn through, okay? And I'm going to come out in this section and tie off and, and hide, okay? So <clears throat> I came up at the point of this stitch here. So this is the one we want to cover. I'm going to go up to the one above it. This is the point of our heart. I'm going to just pull that so that it's um, snug up against the mitt, but not tight, okay? Then... I'm going to need three duplicate stitches in the row above it. So this stitch here will be duplicated. So I'm going to go into this point here. Once I go down into here, I'm going to go up into. So down where I came out, then up into this one. Okay. The base of that second stitch in the row Then I'm going to put my finger on there and pull it through. So that, that keeps me, keeps it from bunching up this, this uh, line right here. Okay. So now I'm at the base of that stitch. This is the one I'm going to duplicate. So I'm going to go to the one above it. Put my needle through and pull. Okay. Then I'm going to go, I'm going to try this left-handed so that you can see in the camera. I'm going to go into the point. Then I'm going to come up at the base of this next stitch in the middle. Okay. 
pull my finger over that just so it just helps it to make a better stitch okay just like that so now I'm ready to do the stitch that's above this one so I'm going to duplicate this stitch so I'm going to go up this next one one right above it okay just like so then I'm going to come across to this point so the base of the second stitch the second row is where I'm going to come I'm going to go into where I finished that one and I'm going to come up to that point I do have a video on how to do duplicate stitch if you need to see this slower and in greater detail okay then this is a stitch I'm going to duplicate so I'm going to go up to the one right above it okay and before I finish this one off I have one in this bottom row I have three here I need five here so if this is the row where this one went in okay I need one more stitch here so I'm going to go one over to there and I'm going to duplicate this one pardon me I'm going to go one over to there so if this middle row is the one that I, I duplicated I'm going to come up to the point of this one on the top row here so this is the third one okay so I'm going to finish off this stitch here by going into that point I'm going to come up there so now you see I have one and three and this top row is the row I'm working on so I had to come to the point of that top row stitch okay there so I'm going to go up to the this first one in the blush color I'm going to work that stitch so I'm duplicating the one below it I'm going to go into that point then I'm going to come up into the point of the one I'm duplicating beside it okay just like so I'm going to go up to this blush because I'm duplicating this one I'm going to go up here I'm going to do five stitches across. So this is two. I'm usually so terrible with my left hand <laughs> that I can't believe this is actually working, but hey. That second one, this is the one I'm duplicating. So up into the one above it. Three. This is going to be a very subtle heart because these colors just... They coordinate so well together, but they're all like a soft kind of color. So it's kind of a little hard to see, but I know it's there and you know it's there. And you can choose whatever color you want. If you don't want to choose one that's in your pro project here, you choose a different color and make it even more contrast if you like, and then you'll see the heart a little bit better. Okay, so now when I finish this one off in the point, I've got one, then three, then five, then I'm going to just do the two above. So right above this one. So I'm going to go into that point, come out the point of the other one. See, one, three, five. Now I'm going to do two. So right above that last one. You can draw this out as I'm as like, follow it back and, and draw it out and then go back and do it do the work it's easier that way okay so there's two there now I'm gonna do another one here okay I'm gonna miss the middle one I'm gonna go over and do the end two so there we go I've got these two I'm gonna do these last two and that's it just like so I chose this color because this is the color of the rim like the up there and down on the bottom and I thought that, and it's not these two colors so I thought it would be the nicest so now I'm gonna go in there I'm gonna trail it down between the layers and come out where I went in see I finished that off and it is a heart sorta <laughs> No, it is, a, it is a heart, but you don't see it very well. I thought it would be a little bit more. Maybe you see it in the camera a little bit better, but this is the heart, okay? And so then when you put it on, the top of the heart is up here and the point is down. So when your hands are down, your heart's not upside down. So that's why you had to turn, um, your, put your fingers down here and, and then do it, okay? So now I'm going to cut that off. I'm gonna tie a knot, but don't tie it so tight that it pulls on that last layer. Okay. And 
and then I'm going to hide it. Peek it in there, pull it out, cut it off, put it back on. Oops, that's absolutely <laughs> did it wrong. The short side is the fingers, okay, my friends? Okay, and that's what it's going to look like. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the other one. Um, see it better at that way. I'm going to do the other one and then I'll see you back. Okay, friends, make sure you put your second glove on so that you know that this is the top where you're going to do it. So if you just grab it and you're doing it on this side, it's going to be on, on the wrong side. So um, once you get one done, put it on, then put the other one on, and then you know you're know you you're going to do your heart on, on this top side, <laughs> okay? I almost grabbed it and just did it, and I could have easily done it on this side without realizing it, okay? So um, basically when you put your open thumbs together like that, your heart should be both on the top there, okay? All right, so continue on and I'll see you back in a minute. All right, friends, there you have it. Striped fingerless mitts with a heart duplicate stitch. <laughs> they're beautiful. I love them and they're so soft and they're so cozy. And uh, I'm going to make a matching beanie. So watch for that. I don't know when I'll get that up, but I'm going to try and make a matching beanie. Um, and then you'll have a set. So um, there you go. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial and for joining me in making a pair of these wonderful fingerless gloves, fingerless mitts. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and come on over to my Facebook group, Koala Knits and Knacks. I'd love to have you a part of that group and see your creations. Um, okay, my friends, thanks again for joining me. I appreciate you.